Good evening, my good tenor. Arbitrations. Every Warframe player needs to do arbitrations and they are actually extremely profitable to do, especially when done right. In this guide, we're going to go over what arbitrations are, why you should do them, the meta squad that is needed to do them at high efficiency and everything that comes with it, the best mission type, and of course, if you are a casual player and how to do them casually, but at a better rate. I do want to say a lot from this guide I got from my community members, but this is all from the arbitration discord. This is where all the info is. It is an amazing discord. They literally teach you everything you need to know about arbitrations. So I will leave a link in the description below for you guys if you're wanting to join the discord and do efficient runs with them. Now let's get straight into the video. Firstly, what are arbitrations? Arbitrations is a game mode that you unlock once you have unlocked Steel Path. Steel Path is unlocked when you complete the star chart. When you head over to the alerts tab, you will see arbitrations pop up and as you do these missions, they will drop Vitus Essence, which you can hand in to the Arbiters of Hexus at any relay for very important mods and Kuva as well. Why should you do arbitrations? To put it plainly, they are extremely profitable when you do these missions. You gain Vitus Essence, which I just mentioned, that gives you Galvanized mods that you can sell for Platinum or you can buy Kuva, which is something that I highly suggest doing if you don't need immediate Platinum. You get Endo from raw mission reward drops, or you get Ayrton sculptures and you gather a lot of resources doing these as well. So you are killing three birds with one stone. Now, if you are efficient and you have a resource booster plus a drop chance booster and a resource blessing on top of that, you will be gaining a lot of Vitus Essence and profiting heavily from these. Great, now you know how profitable arbitrations are. Let's get into the meta squad so you can do arbitrations at max efficiency. Oh, and uh, subscribe if you want more Vitus Essence. Thank you, Megaton. Starting with the first frame, which will be Vault. Now, there are two ways to play Vault here in arbitrations. The first build is Energized Munitions Vault. Now, this is so that you can spam your Ogres easier and not have to worry about ammo after the ammo nerf. And this is my preferred one because it's a lot lazier. Here is the build we run. For the Aura, we run Power Donations so that everyone can get 90% extra strength. That's if everyone runs it. It is very, very important that the whole team does. Otherwise, if you don't have Power Donation, you can run Growing Power as well. Although I would suggest running Power Donation. Power Drift. August Secrets, Umbral Intensifier, Narrow Minded, Shock Trooper for extra damage, Prime Continuity, Blind Rage, Stretch, and Constitution for extra duration. The reason why we run so high duration is because Energized Munitions in itself has low duration, so you need to stack up a lot of duration so that you can keep Energized Munitions up longer. Molt Efficiency for more duration and Molt Augmented. For all the bowls that I'm going to suggest here, please run Molt Augmented and Molt Efficiency. They are the most important. They are very, very good for arbitrations. Shock with the extra damage has 292% extra damage. That's before all the extra strength boost as well. So that's a big damage boost to you and your teammates for electricity damage. Then the second build that we're going to run, the Thermal Sunder version. Now Thermal Sunder is pretty much the exact same way as the build, except we have two augments, Shock Trooper and Thermal Transfer. So what this does is it allows you to give cold damage and heat damage to your allies as well. So you cast Thermal Sunder in the area and when the allies go in there, their damages are buffed by electricity, cold and heat. So it's huge elemental damage bonuses here. Vault supplies a lot of elemental damage if you do it this way. So you can choose between what you want to do here. If you're going to go for a lot longer runs, then I would suggest this one here. Otherwise, if you're just doing what 30, 40, rounds then i would suggest energized munitions i do want to say though just a disclaimer my vault does have archon shards so this is why my stats may vary from yours i just do want to make that very clear for you guys Otherwise, yeah, that is Vault. Now, Vault's job is literally just to provide extra damage. Place down his shields with your allies so that they shoot through them and get extra damage. Then use your second ability, Speed, which is very important so that everyone can have more reload speed. Cast your one so that you get more electricity damage. And then if you're using Energized Munitions, that's for yourself. You could just spam everywhere with your Ogress. Otherwise, if you're using the Thermal Sunder variant, then you just throw down your Thermal Sunder. I would suggest changing your energy color to black so that you don't blind your teammates with everything and all the electricity everywhere running around. Otherwise, yeah, Vault is very, very, very good. Now let's move on to the second frame, which will be Saren. Now Saren, as you may have guessed, uses both of her augments to buff her teammates. Contagion Cloud creates clouds around the enemies dealing toxin damage. This is insanely strong when you pair this with your Ogres and Nightwatch Napalm. It, it's just big, big damage. Saren is huge damage here. Venom Dose as well to give your allies extra corrosive damage. So as you can see, we are pretty much covering 
a lot of elements here for your allies. It's, it's how it works is everyone just buffs each other with damage. For the build, we run Power Donation, Power Drift, August Secrets, Contagion Cloud, Venom Dose, Primed Continuity, Rolling God, Transient Fortitude, Blind Rage, and Unborn Tensify. Molt Augmented, Molt Efficiency. You can subsume over Zarta's Whisper onto your fourth, or you could do Nourish, or you could do Energize Munitions as well for Saren. Zarta's Whisper will give a huge double dipping damage. Saren's job is to supply teammates with extra damage, also to do an insane amount of damage because of all the buffs she's receiving, plus the Toxic Lash and Contagion Cloud, the double dipping, is insane. Moving on to the next frame, which will be Wisp. Wisp is the lifeline of the group. We all know this. She keeps everyone alive. So she needs a lot of strength. So that's why we go 333% strength. For the build, we can go growing power or we can do power donation. It depends which one you choose. Growing power works perfectly fine for Wisp. Speed Drift, Primed Continuity, Blind Rage, August Secrets, Rolling Guard, Transient Fortitude, Power Drift, stretch and then umbra intensify basically just flat strength and a little bit of duration molt augmented for that extra strength and molt vigor as well we also subsume raw here because it makes sense as it's a high damage boost so wisp's job is to keep everyone alive by placing down the modes and also casting raw for that extra damage boost as well wisp is very very important because without her, you will probably die with the operative if you're doing defense missions. Now, the next frame we're going to go over is Mirage. Now, what Mirage does is supplies extra damage to teammates by using Eclipse, of course. And you want to keep it on Mirage and not subsume it onto another frame because obviously it gives the most damage increase. As you can see, a 636%. That's excluding all the extra strength buffs. It's a lot of damage from Mirage and also Raw from Wisp together. It's just huge damage output for the build. Power Donation, Blind Rage, August Secrets, Energy Conversion, Stress, Chance in Fortitude, Unborn Tentify, Primed Continuity, and Total Eclipse. And the reason why we do that is because we actually subsume... I haven't done it yet, just ignore that. But we actually subsume Dispensary onto Mirage's fourth ability and that is very important now for the arcanes it's the same thing a molt augmented and molt efficiency now mirage's job is literally just to cast the clips and then place down dispensary and supply ammo to the teammates for extra ammo sustain and also health and so on and so on you can also use mirage's one to get more damage as well that would also be pretty good so that you could spam your ogres around with all your extra mirages and do quite a bit of aoe damage with the extra clones it's quite good now that we have gone over the frames let's talk about the weapons well one weapon in particular which is the most important here in my opinion and that is the kuva ogres now i know the ammo got nerfed hard but we have worked around that and this weapon is vital for doing arbitrations really fast and effective as you have huge aoe clear in terms of the inner element you can run a heat ogres or a toxin ogres it's your choice depends if you want to use it for general use and depends what you want to build in for it otherwise i would suggest heat so that it could stack better in terms of building better combinations now for the build we have nightwatch napalm now nightwatch napalm is the takeaway here in terms of what makes it so good now now with this build here this is actually a general build that i have used you don't actually need to run this but the main important thing is nightwatch napalm firestorm for that extra blast radius and prime shred for that extra punch through that is the most important thing punch through is really really good here for the ogres so that you can shoot through the walls and do a lot more damage then galvanized chamber heavy caliber for more damage rhyme rounds malignant force and hellfire we do run heavy caliber so that we can spread the bullets further if that makes any sense so that's why we run heavy caliber i have not maxed the mods just ignore that but yeah i barely use it for anything else vigilante supplies this is very very important to sustain your ammo because of the ammo nerf it's really really tough you can however change out one of these mods here of your choice for primed magazine warp that is also possible too. And then primary mercers here for the extra reload speed. And you're also going to get the buff from Vault, which is really, really good because the reload speed of the Ogres is quite long. I would advise turning your energy color to black so you don't get blinded. Please save your teammates' eyes for this. Don't be that guy that puts the energy on. And this includes for all the other frames as well. Change your energy to black. It just helps your eyes. You need them. And then we move on to the Smita Kavat. This is the only pet that you need for this. This is the only pet that you need for arbitrations. Please just use a Smita Kavat. Why? Because of charm. Now, charm gives you a chance of getting extra loot, which is really good for when 
you get a whole bunch of Vitus Essence drops and it allows you to gain more Vitus Essence per hour. Even if you are unlucky, you should get at least one in an hour, hopefully. Otherwise, yeah, the build is Prime's Animal Instinct, Tech Enhance, Prime Pack Leader, Link Health, Medi Pet Kit, Charm, Tech Assault, Synth Fiber, Link Armor, and Fetch. Of course, you need Fetch to fetch everything. Of course, you need Fetch to gather everything up, but Charm is the most important mod here. You need to have a Smeeter. If you do not have one, I would highly suggest working towards one as soon as you possibly can. All right, let's move on to the Spectres. Now, the Spectres is very important because you need to run Proteus Spectres here, and that's so that the Proteus Spectres can place down Dispensary thus sustaining more ammo and more health and so on you can get any specters they don't really matter which ones i just chose vapors but this is the loadout i ran for my protea specter it's just anyone really kuva czar kuva august czar is the safest option or whichever weapon you really want it doesn't matter you want to create a loadout for your specters and run protea then i don't have it but the ancient healer is really good for this 90 percent damage reduction plus knockdown immunity, which is absolutely amazing. Otherwise, if you don't have Prime Surefooted and you hate knockdown, you can run Unairu. Alternatively, you can use Nidus Spectres as well for extra strength gain. That also works too because of the Nidus link. The Wisp of the party will benefit from a Nidus Spectre to give Wisp more strength. So that's where you can use the Nidus Spectre there as well. This leads me to the focus schools. I would suggest running either Matarai for that extra strength on the sling or Vazrin for protective sling. This is the better one in my opinion. Protective sling will save you a lot, especially in defense and heal the operative that you're protecting. It's really, really important to have someone with protective sling. This will save you for when you're doing long missions. Now, let's go over what are the best mission types for arbitrations. There are only two, defense and interception missions. Please do only these two. They are the most efficient and just better than the others. Please don't bother with the others. Of course you can do them, but if you want efficiency and you're trying to look for the most Vitus Essence, then these two are the best. Technically speaking, interception is better. Otherwise, defense is nice and fast for rewards and getting endo and so on. I quickly want to go over how to do interceptions there is a very specific way to do these missions okay so i've just hopped into the mission here and so basically what you want to do is you want to in quotation marks store the interception mission for as long as you possibly can now the way to do that is as follows it'll be a bit more difficult in a solo but i just wanted to demonstrate basically you want to capture two points so for example i chose a and then i chose d here and then you want to neutralize b now why do you want to do this well so you can basically get one percent higher than the opponent on the top left as you can see the percentage there as i'm busy grabbing it they're going to beat you in the beginning because obviously i'm doing a solo but when you're in a group that everyone will you know do their part so it'll be a bit better but basically i'm capturing b but not fully just to neutralize it so it's basically just gray and then i'm just going to wait until that it is one percent higher than the enemy so that way you can kind of kite it and slow it down as long as you possibly can and killing as much enemies so that more drones will spawn because remember you only get vitus essence drops from the drones that drop in there can only be five drones that spawn in at any given time this is very very important so five drones can only spawn at any given time so interception missions go on for longer allowing you to spawn more drones and getting more vitus essence so the whole goal of interception missions is not to do rewards like endo it's just vitus essence farming as you can see i come back to quickly grab b and you can see there we start to go above the enemy percentage and then we kite perfectly and then you just gotta protect that's all you have to do as a group and you'll see it'll move nice and slow and you will start to get a whole bunch of vitus essence and a lot more enemies great we have gone over everything that you need in terms of to do arbitrations as efficient as you possibly can. Now, here are my tips for the casual player who's wanting to get more Vitus Essence. These are my suggestions. Pick any of the frames that I have suggested if you have any. If you don't, pick one that is easiest to get for you or just pick a role that you think you would enjoy and go for that frame. Farm an Ogress or any AoE weapon. I would suggest the Ogress because of Nightwatch Napalm. It's a really strong mod. Then get yourself a Proteus Spectre so you can sustain ammo. If you pick your shots carefully, you will be okay. Otherwise, whatever frame you pick, if you can, subsume Energize Munitions on and just spam. This way, you can carry yourself in a random public lobby without having to worry about your allies. I do want to say that you don't have to run these exact frames. There are many other options like Oberon, 
chroma and so on and so on if you are casual and you just want to do it at your own pace then by all means pick your frames that you want to play and load out and do it that way another suggestion is because of siren is here with all those buffs that you get from your teammates you could run the sobek here now the reason why i run the sobek is because of acid shells enemies explode on death dealing 450 gross of damage in a 50 meter radius now this with all the buffs and everything like that and also from toxic lash from siren it does big damage and can nuke quite well this could be a really good alternative if you do not have the ogres or do not want to farm the ogres this actually might work as well like i said especially because of all the damage boosts however you do not have the range and the punch through so it won't be as effective as the ogress but for the bold seeking fury galvanized hull amalgam shotgun barrage prime point blank galvanized savvy scattering inferno vigilante armaments and acid shells really really decent alternative not a bad idea prime immersus as well for that reload speed of course and you will nuke quite well if you want to do that but if you are wanting to run things more efficiently and get more vitus essence then try what i have suggested and see if that works for you also a final note please only run arbitrations with with boosters if you are wanting to get the most out of Vitus Essence drops, please save your time and value your time. That means a resource booster, drop chance booster, and a blessing on top of that for that extra chance. That makes a big difference by the way and that's pretty much everything you need to know about arbitrations this is a thorough guide please let me know if i missed anything in the comments down below i'm pretty sure i've got everything like i said it's not set in stone you can choose your loadouts if you think something's better go for it by all means i hope you guys enjoyed the video please hit that like button and subscribe i will see you all in the next one my good tenor